How's it going, everyone? That's right. We're here for week two of the Indigo League of Legends today. I'm your coach, trainer, caller, coach of the San Francisco Swappers. Today, we are facing the Miami Hurricanes or the Pokey Resort. I did post an analysis video for this matchup. If you notice that there is a upgrade quality in this upload because apparently my iPhone will not record this very long battle. If you see the length of this video, it's really long. So, shoutouts to Kangas Cloud for helping me out. He's the coach of the Tacoma, the, the Tacoma Trevenants, whom I will be facing really soon. So, shoutouts to him there with the recording. I started out with Phoenix, the town flame. I switched out going to Guildmaster if you get the reference to the mystery dungeon games. But there is Wigglytuff. I haven't mentioned Wigglytuff all that much in my analysis videos. But Wigglytuff is my fairy type for the team. I go for Charge Beam where I did earlier. I went for Dazzling Gleam. I brought Wigglytuff specifically for the core of Cresselia and Sableye whom I know is going to be very annoying in this fight. We do go for Shadow Ball at plus one. That actually did an okay amount. I'm not satisfied that was a critical hit, I believe. I know he's going to recover with the Moonlight move. Moonlight to restore the health there, you see? And we have Behem Alloy. Now this Pokemon I, I have another Behem, that's an offensive variant, but this one, guys, is a defensive Behem, and this set is what a lot of people would not expect. It has Thunder Wave and Dark Pulse to hit the Cresselia super effective. Now I'm going to speed this up real quick here. See, I'm going really fast. Alright, so basically what's going to happen is we get into this really long and really unnecessary stall war where I try going for the para flinch, the chance of paralysis and getting a flinch from Dark Pulse. And this happens a lot, you see there, I, he gets a little bit of para, para, paralyzation there, if I can say it, and he got a couple of flinches, but that's not enough apparently. I use restoring health from Moonlight, so... Yes, that's wonderful. I get into this really long stall war that I... And did I tell you guys that this battle was during midnight on Sunday night, like midnight? Like, it was crazy. Like, I had to stay up that long for this battle. Oh my god. So anyway, we finally forced the Cresselia out. And here comes Tyranitar. Now, I know he's gonna probably either attack or Mega Evolve, something like that, and that's why I brought Gastrodon. Because I knew he was going to bring Tyranitar, no question about that. He goes for Dragon Dance, and after a plus one, I figured, okay, this is a defensive, physically defensive Gastrodon, which you guys saw in week one, really boss. So I'm either going to stay in, or he's going to stay in, or switch out. In this case, He's going to switch out and go into Cresselia, which actually was a great play by Poké Resort, just because he can Moonlight again, but he chose not to for some reason as I go into Gasper, the Mega Gengar. This is a different Gengar from last week. This is a defensive Gengar, which has Taunt, Destiny Bomb, Shadow Ball, and Sludge Bomb. So we do go for the Mega Evolution here, you see, and I go for Sludge Bomb, I wanted to just hit something, I knew he was going to switch. And we do get the critical hit poison on the Sableye, which is actually okay by me, I mean, it does not matter in the sense that he has Recover on his Sableye. And so far in this battle, most of his Pokemon that I'm facing has either Leftovers or a way to set up or recover their HP. Really, <laughs> that is just a crazy team concept in my opinion. It just leads to Stall Wars like you saw earlier with the 
you know, Cresselia and Beaky, and we're going ahead this again because I go for Dark Pulse. I hit at Cresselia, but you know what? Behem is tired at Cresselia, so we're going to go for Dark Pulse and just not have that stalwart again. So, that's amazing. Really cool. Now we see the Metaletta in this battle. So here I go for Thunder Wave, trying to paralyze the Metaletta. Metaletta, if you guys don't know, I haven't really faced one in competitive play all that often. But this one is a Heal Bell subset, so it has Substitute apparently. And it has Heal Bell to restore or actually get rid of status conditions. And Metaletta is a psychic type Pokemon, so Dark Pulse would be super effective. I went for Dark Pulse so many times with Behem in this battle. See, I, I think this is my 7th or 8th time going for a Dark Pulse with Behem in this battle. So, also Behem has Psychic and a... I actually alternate between Rain Dance or Sunny Day depending on the battle if I have to change the weather for some reason. I wanted to do that for Tyranitar Sandstream to get rid of it, but Tyranitar walls or BHM is walled by Tyranitar, so. But that said, man, that's just crazy talk there, but I go for this without going to Wiggly Tough and we dodge the Will O Wisp. He goes for Taunt. I'm not really sure why he did that. I went for Dazzling Gleam. It's four times super effective against the Sableye, and you take him out just like that. Here he goes with Lucario. I know he's going to probably beg me into switching out because the bullet punch is painfully obvious. I actually stay in and go for a flamethrower attack, which is super effective because Steel is weak to fire. Here he goes for another sword stance. I'm like, really? I'm going to stay and go for a flamethrower. He really should have attacked me, but granted, I still have Talonflame, who has Will Wisp, not Flare Blitz like my other Talonflame, which I haven't used in my last video, but that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to bet him and me switching out, but that didn't work out too well. Man, that's crazy, you know? This battle is crazy, but this was really epic, that's all I'm saying. Here he goes to sub and Psyshock on Behem, and I don't understand that play, to be honest, because Behem is psychic, and Psyshock is a psychic type move. Probably a misclick there, that's okay. We're restoring our leftovers with Behem, and so is the Metal Lucka. He switches out, goes in a Sylveon here, and that was a good play. I really should have gone for a Psychic, expecting Sylveon to come in, but at the same time, it's better off to just keep going for the same move. Here, I wanted to see what he's going to do. He goes for Calm Mind, and that's okay. We're going to go for Psychic, and he has leftovers, so... Yes, most of the Poké Resorts Pokémon are holding leftovers. He goes for another Calm Mind, and this is a red flag warning of what this set is all about on Sylveon. I really should have paid more attention to this, because what's going to happen is he's going to set up another Calm Mind and go for Wish. That is really bad, because how am I going to handle a plus three Sylveon? I really don't know. He can run train on my team a little bit after those boosts. So yeah, I after this turn I'm like, oh my goodness, this is not good. Because now he has all the momentum because I ended up stalling him out a lot earlier in the match, which had all the momentum on my side, but now he's setting up and it's like, yeah, this is not good. So here I go for the switch out. I know he's going to probably protect and, or either attack. So we're going to sack off Wigglytuff. He did a great job this battle. And now we can bring in something for free, basically, and not take any damage. And I chose to bring back in Mega Gengar Gasper. He goes for protect, and now he knows I have Destiny Bond. For those who don't know, Destiny Bond is an attacking move. Well, it's not really an attacking move. It's a move that will 
take the user. If I faint, he'll go down as well. So here I go for taunt, expecting him to call mine. That worked out. And here I am like, okay, it's really obvious that he's expecting me to go for Destiny Bond again. So we're going to go for Sludge Ball now. I actually live the Hyper Voice. And that's great. Because if I did not survive the Hyper Voice for some reason, I think I would lose the match somewhat. I don't know. But here I finally decided to go for the Hyper, or he went for Hyper Voice, but I finally decided to go for the Destiny Bond, and this is what I'm talking about. We take care of the Sylveon while I go down, so we have a double down. On the double down, we go into Kiram Black. I chose Kiram Black over Flygon in this battle because I thought it would be cool to use Kiram Black, but it just didn't work out too well because my opponent lives a fusion bolt and gets a critical hit on the focus blast he actually hits it which i never really hit that move it's so inaccurate but that's okay we're going to go into count flame phoenix and go for the brave bird to finish off the meloletta and i know he still has tyranitar in the back whom I have a solution for, so we're going to withdraw Talonflame, go into Gastrodon, and Gastrodon can take those earthquakes all day long. And here I'm expecting him to recover, or no, not recover, I mean Dragon Dance. That's right, Dragon Dance to set up on me. I go for a cover, so that's great. I know he's going to attack. That means that we're going to finish the match with Counter. And that is the match, guys. Really long. Yes, really long. My iPhone couldn't take that amount of space to record that long match. But anyway, so that was a 3-0 victory by the San Francisco Swampers. Thank you, Kanga or Kanga's Cloud, for helping me record in high quality. Thank you, Poké Resort, for challenging me to an epic fight, even though it was really long. All right, so week three now? Week 3 is coming up, guys, so I'll have an analysis video for that coming real soon, and I hope you guys look forward to that. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye, Chiners.